off and running. So. Okay. We're on. All right. Um, how do I share my screen? Can I, how do I do that? I don't remember how to do that. At the bottom, there's a share screen button in green with an arrow going up. Oh, there Press we the go. Okay. Button. All right. I'm going to uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. You have to enable that, Bob. Host. Enable screen sharing. I'm going to change the host to you, David, okay? Sure. All right, now you're the host. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so everybody should see the agenda. Yep. Right. Okay, so review of minutes of the May 1st, 20 Architectural Licensing Board meeting. Does anybody have any comments about that? No? No, I'm good. No, I'm, I read it. I'm good. All right. Motion to uh, approve the minutes. I move to approve the minutes. The second. There was Lorraine? Okay. Yes, that's Lorraine. Brian, I second him. Surround. All right. All in favor, aye. 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 All right. Great. Aye. Unanimously approved. I, I presume that because of uh, Twig's renovation project, she won't be joining us today. That, that's the impression I got, yep. Okay. Uh, comments or concerns of any person present today? Anybody? Uh, uh, a cat question? Sorry? Is Richard? that Bob? No, it's Richard, uh, Richard oh. Hilbert. There's a cat question waiting to be answered. Dave, can you see that now as the host on your I'll stop sharing. It's Angela. I, I sent it. It was Manny Machado. He was asking for the call in number. Okay. So I sent it? that along. Thank you, Richard. All right, back to the agenda. All right, um, DCB investigation division complaint status. Um, I'll bring that up, hold on please. And who else do we have on the? Uh, Janita is oh, listed as Oh, Janita right. is on the phone and Pamela is on the phone. Right, Be correct. Yep. All they right. were both unable to talk, I believe, right? Uh, yes, you should hear me uh, now. Yeah, we can hear you. Pamela, okay. Pamela Brown. Um, so, I, I mean, I looked over this. It seems that we, you, you know, there's, there's, we can see what the current closed. We got an update on some of these older ones uh, last time uh, from Paulette because they were in legal. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any further questions about this report, but it seems to address what we're asking for. So we thank you, Pamela and Janita for doing this. Sure, it was uh, also with the help of our IT department, they were able to get it done for you. So glad it's working out. Great. Does anybody have any input on this? Lauren, Phil? David, may I interrupt for one second, please? Sure, Bob. Um, we, Gina Calabro, I just got a, a, a note from her. Can you allow her to talk? Or just, I think you have her listed as a, should be listed as a attendee in this bar. And go, let me see if I can see that. I, I don't. Look, here, I can or. see it. Gina Calabro, chat. Uh, yeah, but Bob, I don't know. She's not listed as one of the people that's allowed to talk right now. But okay, she, okay. And otherwise. So you'd have to promote her, or you're saying, okay, I can promote her. Let me see. Right, right. Let me see. Let you're me see. I got now. it. I got it now. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. Host. So, oh, attendees. Got it. Allow to talk. Gina, talk away. 
Okay, I should be on. I just want to make sure. You are you on. on. Okay. Got you. Perfect. I'll mute right now. Okay, so you don't want to talk. You just wanted to be able to talk. I got it. Okay. All right, Mr. Oh, Chairman, yeah. if there's nothing further for Janita and I, we will move on to our, our next upcoming meeting. But if you still need us to hang well, on, I we just, will. Are, are we all set with, with the complaint? Does anybody want to make any comments on that? Does Gina want I, to make I, any comments on that? I thought that, they, that we've gotten what we've asked for. So I was happy about that. Okay. Gina, this any? Is, this ahead. is Angela. Um, yeah, the, the format, excellent. Um, I just some of these older cases that are, are over in legal, I don't know how we check on them to see, you know, 1,200 days, 1,100 days, see what's going on with those and why they're still that old. So Paulette, Paulette took a, had a vacation day today and we don't, we'll have to follow up with her again That's fine. At, at, Thank the you. Next, at the next meeting. So Bob, let's just keep, there's, there's a comment from the minutes of the last meeting that talks about these two specifically. So can we carry that forward into the meeting minutes for this one so that we can discuss this, I guess, in September? The continuation of discussion. Um, I'm looking at the. I want to make sure I get the right. If we look at. Um, I mean, even some of them are five, six hundred days. Like, wh why? Bob, it's number three on the agenda. Under um. On the second page. It's number three there, but but in terms of the. No, but in terms of him just putting it, keeping it on the agenda. Yeah, 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 you know, I think we always want to keep that on the agenda. But in terms of the minutes, um, if you look at, yeah, also item three, um, the, the third paragraph, we talked about the two complaints, 2017, 2125, and 2017, 78. Right. Right in so the minute. So you, we, we want to carry those forward, David? Well, yeah, we want to ask Paulette to comment on those at the September meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, back to the agenda. Thank you, Pamela and Janita. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Too. Old business, proposed changes to Connecticut statutes, penalties for failure to meet CE requirements. Oh, I don't want this. How the hell do I get out of there? Um, I don't remember where we are on this thing. I thought that we're not, we're no longer Architects are automatically licensed architects. I just I just don't recall what what the issue here is anymore. Let me let's see if there's anything in the minutes from. Uh... Right, I agree with you, Robert. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, David. I agree with you. It was um, I thought the way it is now is if you're a licensed architect, you're automatically an interior designer. You don't need to do a separate application or anything. I don't think so. You, I I never applied for mine, and I don't have that license, so. You know, you don't have it. It's a registration, really, but yeah, I registered. Yeah, I looked it up online. I'm not in the list. No. And I, I recall other architects at one of my previous firms. You know, you got to fill the paperwork out. So, I, uh, I think I'm sorry. I think it was open ended. Julianne had brought this up in her, early on. I think in the at the January meeting that they were going to look into the idea of having an automatic. You know, have not having to have architects apply. For, right. Because they have, they, they can do it, you know. They so, but that that was never, you know. I don't, I don't think we ever finalized that. Can I? This is Gina. Can I just um, mention to you? This was um, she did mention it. It was something that was written up, and we did receive a copy of it. That um, this was going to go into effect. I think it was part of legislation. It was to be part of a DCP bill. Uh, I don't until it's a it goes through. 
and that probably won't happen until September because it won't be addressed in a special session that's upcoming this month. So but, um, that was my understanding of uh, where that stood. So th uh, thank you, Gina. Bob, can you reflect in the minutes or, or confirm with Julianne that this is in a pending bill and then reflect that in the minutes somehow? Yes. If that's the case or what the case is? Yep, I will. So we're not struggling with this? And Phil, you're inactive, by the way. As I, an architect or as an interior person? As an interior designer. I, that. I just looked you up. I appreciate that, thank you. <laughs> also, my understanding was is well, that once though. this is approved, that it's an automatic and that you would automatically be registered. That's the way we understood it. Th that's so, also the way I just, remember it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, me too. I guess I just thought it was already approved. So. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a statutory change. Um, I will check that. I will follow that up with Julianne. Back to uh, the agenda. Um, so 4B, update of proposed changes, to Connecticut regulations, architectural education, continuing education, emeritus status. Um, there was a lot of back and forth between uh, Julianne and myself, because I wanted to issue a notification to the community, the architectural community. Um, and we, we, the plan is to send an email out to all registered, I'm sorry, all licensed architects <clears throat> regarding the CE requirements, as well as to give, you know, uh, AIA Connecticut, uh, you know, uh, communicate, same letter basically communicating with AIA Connecticut so that they, they can uh, uh, communicate this as well. Um, we got into, uh, so I'm going to raise, I'm going to bring up another um, an email that becomes the sort of final approved language with Julianne Avalon. And the email you sent this morning, right? The, I just sent it to everybody. I don't know if anybody had a chance yeah. to see it, but. My question on it is, it says upon renewable of your 2022 license. Yeah. Yeah, no, there was a lot of discussion about this, you know, is the whole point I was trying to make and the sense of urgency I tried to get was that that there would only be a six month window, which I don't think is that big of a burden, frankly, but uh, except for those that aren't used to getting CEs. Um, because of the way it works, it work, you know, CEs are on a calendar year and it's the prior calendar year. So if we asked next year at renewal, then that would have only we, th that's why I needed to notify people because they only had six months from now until December 31st to get their CEs so that next year they could attest to having them. So then I got back eventually <laughs> the comment from the department. It was like, well, that's not fair. It's like, well, that's why I've been urging, you know, we, we make a notice, but because the regs weren't approved until like June, we couldn't do anything until the regs were approved. And it just kind of put us in a box. So therefore it got pushed into the next year. So I'm not thrilled with that, but it's kind of what I was advised. So you would have from June of 21 to June of 22 to get your CEUs? No, the letter goes out now. We tell everybody it's in place and they basically have from January 1st to June, to Jan January 1st to December 31st. I guess now, of, now I'm confused. Okay. I, I mean, so the notice goes out now. We're telling them in 22. Basically, we're telling them earn your CEs in 21, so that when you renew in 22, you're compliant. And that's the part. That's not the part that I'm confused about. I'm confused Sorry. about you saying that your CEUs go calendar year versus license year. I thought right. So, I mean, we'll, we'll be the only state that does that. Every other yeah. state, you, know, you go whatever your license is. That's your license year is when you got to do your CEUs. So in Connecticut, it would be June to June. No, it's not that way. January to December. It's not the way the statutes got written. It's calendar year. It's oh, a prior God. year. That's, that's really confusing. That's too bad because all the other states are. Every state in the country. 
Um, yeah. Well, the advantage here is, is that it lines up with uh, AIA. So AIA, that's a good point. And that, and that makes it easy to audit. Well, it'd be really interesting to see if it, I, I understand that aligns with AIA from that perspective, but it'd be interesting to see because like I'm licensed in 10 states and I just go on AIA and it has a chart for each one of the states and tells me, and it tracks it based on when I'm licensed. So it'd be interesting to see how they start tracking it on their charts. If they track it, even though I'm licensed June to June, if they track it January to December, because if they don't, then it's going to get really confusing. So somebody might have to actually have a conversation with AIA about it. Otherwise, when I give you the document that says, here's what my, here's what I've done, it's not going to show January to December. It's going to show June to June. You'll have well, to show. Gina Calabro has raised her hand. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Gina, so, would you like to speak? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, <clears throat> the, you, when you pull up your transcript, you can pull up previous years. So, and they are dated by when you receive your credit. So even if you go by the license period, people would be able to um, justify the time frame. So even though you could you pull a transcript up for a year, what they would have to do is they'd have to actually pull two two years and then take six months of each year to cover it. I mean, I don't I don't see it as a problem. Even when we pull up transcripts for people, we're able to give them um, we're able to. I don't want to say juggle it, but we could fix it just to show a certain time frame. So I don't think, I mean, I think as a, you know, a value added service to our membership, I'd be willing to do that if they needed it within that license period. So I don't think we're only, you know, yes, you're limited if you go on the AIA national site and you pull your own transcript, then you'd have to pull two years worth of transcripts, but they are dated when you did take those CEUs. Right. Like, so yeah, can I ask you a question? That would be an issue if you did want to go by your your license it, period. Yeah, you know, I don't disagree. I keep my own records anyway, and I keep my honestly, I keep my January to December, so I could do it in a heartbeat in thirty seconds. But um, it's just that it's different than everybody else. So most people will assume they have to really pay attention to know that it's January to December. So that's all I was saying. I mean, I agree that it's not that big a deal for us to figure it out. Gina, can you talk to? you know, the home office and uh, and find out with us, with it being on a calendar year basis, the CEs for the prior year, whether they can just track that for Connecticut. So you, you know, you click Connecticut and it shows the prior year. And they will, David. That's, that's why I needed to know what the requirements were because I can go back to national, just like right now, if you go in and you want to pull just a New York state report, you can do that. I'm sure, Phil, you've done that. We just pulled your New York state. So my whole thing was I needed to give them parameters. So if the parameter is, is that you want to go by license period of, you know, August to July, then I can give them that parameter just to pull in that time frame. All right. Well, I think our problem is solved. That's, you know, the, the, the way that the, the, I don't know if it was statute or regulation was, is based on a calendar year. And that was what. Yeah, it is. I just double checked it. You're hundred percent right. Okay. Any other does anybody want to actually look at the rest of this thing and, and see if there's, because I'd, I'd kind of like you all to, I don't know if we need a formal uh, uh, um, approval of this, but I'd like to be able to send this out. I'd like to have the department send it out to licensed registrants, the li licensed architects uh, entirely, because there's more than just the AIA members, um, and then also share the communication with AIA for publication. You know, I read through it already, and I I think it's a very good summary. It hits all the key points. And once it's approved, David, or that you say that it's going to go out, just let me know, and then I'll work with um, the national office to set up as far as transcripts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to send it to you separately for inclusion in your newsletter or the ARCHI, whatever it's called. Um, so uh, uh, any, no comments, can, can we, can we, I guess, approve that, that, that I issue or that, yeah, that a letter gets issued um, by, uh, uh, as, as shown in this, in this uh, email, as drafted in this email. You need a motion, I'll make a motion to approve it. 
I guess it just might as well. I'll second Sangelo. Any further comment? So uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Okay, none, none opposed. Uh, Phil, did you vote? I don't know, you're, you're muted. I'm sorry, yeah. In motion, yeah. Aye. Okay, so it's unanimous. All right, thanks. Um, back to uh, the agenda. Um, the corporate practice, Bob, maybe you could discuss on 4C because yeah. there's been some, uh, some action, correct? Correct. We have uh, received a fair amount of uh, emails. What, what's been happening is our license services division has flagged all of the non-compliant renewals in terms of corporate structure, corporate uh, you know, stock ownership and so forth. And I've contacted, you know, and I, I basically get a notice from them saying the following credentials are in, uh, are on, you know, active under review status. So I have emailed, you know, all the ones that I get, email the contact, you know, the email, the contact, uh, the credential email. And, and, and this, it's been very, they've been, the people, the entities have been very responsive. Um, it's usually an issue where one of the principal's licenses has lapsed within the last year. Uh, sometimes their stock percentages have changed, sometimes by very little, like less than a percent. But it, there's been a lot of back and forth, and I, have to, I, I was pretty impressed with the response and turnaround time that these are being corrected. Um, and so it's, it, you know, from my end, it seems, you know, that this uh, process we have in place seems to be working very well. So can you describe, how does it work, Bob? Uh, we got to basically, at the start of the renewal cycle, our license services divisions had checked with us and said, we would like to flag that they review the submissions and anything that doesn't look compliant in terms of the stock percentages, you know, the corporate structure, not in compliance with what it's supposed to be. The renewal is flagged. They stat, they flag it as uh, active under review and the credentials are sent by email from license services to me. So are they actually cross-referencing with the secretary of state or is it, is it a self-reporting thing? It's, it's a self, I believe it's self-reporting. It's what, the, what they're submitting to us on their renewal. And, and, and the ones, the, what, all the ones, you know, the, and we've, I've contacted them back on one by one basis stating, you know, what the issues were that you're, you're not, your principal's license has expired or, and, you know, various things like, it's basically a percentage, ownership percentages have changed and it's and they've been they've been corrected in in all instances they've revised their uh, I've, I've received documents from them it, you know corporate documents that uh, show uh, revisions or principals have renewed their licenses uh, so it's you know it's it's it seems to you know it seems to be working from my point of view that's awesome I'm surprised some that that, that I was that, too to be honest corporations can I was work very that surprised. fast yeah. Well, they're concerned that they're not in compliance and, and uh, you know, I, I get responses back from emails like within, you know, less than 24 hours in terms of what do we need to do and, and or documents that prove that they've changed what was wrong, you know, corp revision. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Do you send an email to them with like a skull and crossbones uh, on it or something <laughs> like that? I do. I, I upload the documents once they're reviewed and they're compliant and the, the, the uh, credential ch status has changed to active. And then I send them an email back stating that we've received your, uh, your documents and, um, you know, you're now, you know, in, in compliance. So Bob, with the renewal, um, I can't see the renewal like form cause it's just an online process now. Um, with every corporate renewal, are they required to upload certain documents to show their corporate are, yes. structure? Okay. Yes. That's what I wasn't clear on is to, I know from the corporate, um, from the Secretary of State standpoint, you know, those corporations are supposed to send their minutes over there once a year when they have their annual meeting. But right. I wasn't sure if any of that information got to DCP. So it sounds like it does and you don't even need to interface with Secretary of State. Is that correct? Yeah, I would say that's so correct. My, that's Sorry, this is Julianne. It's my understanding so that we are not receiving the Secretary of State documents. 
I think we have to double check that. Um, the Secretary of State, the information they're giving the Secretary of State is still separate and apart. We would have to look at that. Um, they are attesting to certain information right. um, related right. to corporate structure, but attesting to it, not necessarily providing as evidence thereof. So the warning flags or the that Bob was talking about, that is a good way of us being able to, if we think there's an issue, flag it internally so we look into it more. Um, but I think we'd have to double check on exactly what is being presented in terms of what is a mandatory upload with your renewal. Well, what I was hearing from Bob was that they, the DCP was getting the documents with the corporate practice renewals. Is that not I true? Think, well, I think, Julianne, I think you're correct. We're getting their attestation of, of um, you know, what, what they're telling us is not compliant. It, I, I, may, it, I don't, you're right. It's not, what I, that's what I've seen. I've seen, I've seen their documents that, that, that I've been getting from licensed services, not from the Secretary of State. So I don't think, and again, we can double check this with licensed services, but I don't think that there's a mandatory upload that goes along with, so for example, with accountants, you know, if you're going to do, or it was not accountants, um, with appraisers, uh, if you're going to be renewing, you have to upload copies of all your CE when you're renewing to show, like, so you're clicking the box saying, yes, I promise I took it, but also here it is. Um, you know, a lot of other areas, it's just we promise that we did take the information, so, or that we did take the CE. Here, I have to, I, we'd have to verify whether or not there's any mandatory documents that needed to be uploaded along with how they're attesting to their corporate structure. And I thought it was just an attestation that they're representing how they're the composition of their organization, but we'd have to double check. Hi, Julianne. Hi, good morning. Um, I, now I'm drawing a blank. We we'd asked Bob to check. What what did we just ask you to check on, Bob, with Julianne? <laughs> with the prior agenda item. Yeah. Um, the, the status of the interior designers relative uh, uh, interior, yes. design, interior designer regist registration status relative to active architects. So we had been discussing not no longer requiring architects to that they're automatically show up on the interiors list because it's as an architect, you're already automatically a registered interior designer. Now I'd have to go back and look, but wasn't that part of our legislative package for- Oh, this, that's for, right. For that's so we wanted that status happened. on that. So that's, that needs to be a change that's, on, that's pending because it never got acted on. Is that right? Yeah, so I have to, uh, so actually one of the things I have to do in the um, next few weeks is go through our entire legislative agenda for, again, the session that never happened and make sure everything is still where exactly where we want it to be, see if there's anything addition that we want to um, add in for this year, but I will make sure that um, I look back into the interior design issue. I, it was my recollection that we had dealt with that for proposed legislation for, and the, the session, or the 2020 session, um, and I don't know if you guys had already discussed this before, but the special session is not going to be handling any of the general DCP bills. We have a couple drug control things that are more uh, you know, COVID-related issues or major public health-related issues that might be dealt with during public session or um, during special session, rather. But other than that, everything's getting pushed to 2021, and that's going to be a long session. So um, all the things that we had talked about before are still in the hopper. It just is going to take Understood. longer because of COVID. Do, do you think it's just going to all get punted to the long session in 20? 20... Yes. Yeah. In 2021 is going to be so we're going January to June this next session. Julianne, yes. Where does this change exist right now? This proposed change is the statutory. Yes, that was a statutory change. Okay, um, I'm confused. All right, statutory. All right. Um, the interior. I, what we're talking this interior design issue. It's it's a it's pending a statutory change. Uh, it is. Yeah, so there's a proposal in um, for a bill. So now, because I mean, so what we have to do is we have to start from scratch. So 
we still have governor's office sign off on all of our proposals um, that they, they said, unless something changes, you know, we approved it last time, we're approving it this time. You know, you, and we already had our language drafted for all of our proposals. So okay. ours are pretty smooth sailing in as long as they were already in. Um, but now we still have to get, so it's gonna be one of the governor's bills. So we still have to have a bill number assigned and go through the whole rigmarole. But, um, but yeah, this is, I mean, since it's a DCP, I think this is, I think this was in the DCP licensing bill rather than the DCP technical bill. So unfortunately our licensing stuff oftentimes doesn't get approved until toward the end of session. So um, you're probably looking at you know, having them pass it in May, June, and then with an implementation date of probably October 1st for when this would become effective. So you're looking at more than a year out. Right. Okay. While we're on this, I had another, I'm just, just having a senior moment. Um, over the past several years, we've discussed um, modifying our lapsed license um, requirements, because I, I believe we've, we, we discovered that the architectural requirements are more stringent than other licenses, meaning if, if, you know, if somebody lets their license lapse, they have to pay back dues all the way back to whenever they lapsed, and that could be 20 years. Um, and we talked about coming up with other parameters. I just don't remember where we ended up on that, and it didn't end up in our revisions to our current regs or statutes. David? David? Yes. Um, I actually looked into that. It, it does exist. There, there is a 10 year, I believe it's in, uh, I believe it's in the regulations. I went online, Julianne, to the, through the, uh, you know, our department link to the Secretary of State's website. And I, 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 I'm 99, I know it's, I know it's either in the statutes or regs, I've checked it several times. David, you and I spoke about it a few months ago. Yeah. And I wasn't sure myself and I've, I've been doing so many reinstatements. I really, I, I did a lot of digging. I believe if you check the regulation that's currently in place, it says so the, the one that just the one that just passed. It's it's in the, it's on the website now. I mean it's in the it's in the Secretary of State. I don't know when. I have to look at the Let footnotes, me, but it's, so it's just there. Let me clear what you're talking about, though. So you're talking Reinst about architects, architects that are reinstating. Yes. In the past, we've we've been collecting all the past due fees from the date their license lapsed to the to present, and in some cases, that's been 15, 20 years. Right. Yeah, so that was an issue, but we, hold on, that's, I, we, I thought we addressed that. It, it, I'm 99.99% I'm sure, I, I looked at it in the regs, if you go. All right, I'll double check the regs, because that's going to become part of that communication then, and I'll go back yeah. to Julianne <laughs> for approval, because we want to make sure that people understand what's, yeah. what changed. And yeah, I addressed please. emeritus and CEs, but I didn't address lapsed licenses in that. Yeah. If we could, if someone could please check the regs, or uh, I went to the, you know, our link, Julian, on our website. Under I'll double check. Yeah. I don't want to do it now, but I'll, I'll, no, I'll no, check yeah. again. Because unless, unless I am having a real bad senior moment, <laughs> I remember seeing that there because I said, well, that's going to change a lot because, you know, I have, I have chart, I, you know, I've, I've had some reinstatements that have come close to the 10 year mark, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to overcharge. Yeah. But yeah. All right, I will, I will look back at that, and um, I don't want to wait to go on this. So this gets a little complicated. If I, I need to change the correspondence, and we just had a motion to approve the, 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 the letter that was already approved by the department. We haven't voted on it yet. So here's no, we what haven't. happened. Did, that, uh, did we? Oh, maybe. Sorry, Julianne. I apologize. So what happened in the um, in the last round of the regulations is that we changed the language in there and says, so if more than three years have elapsed from the date on which the license elapsed, the holder shall not even practice architecture until they've paid a, the license fee, renewal fees for each lapsed year up to a maximum of 10 years. Oh, that's good. What's so the, that's what's what we just did in the last round that was approved on June 4th, 
of this. So that's and that's in process. place. That's in place now. What's can you just give me the statutory reference on that? So I the regulatory, the regulatory reference on that. Yeah, the regulatory reference, and uh, you know what I'll do is I'm just going to email you a link to it now and the actual reference. All right. So, so maybe uh, we we uh, you know uh, 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 amend the the motion. Of, uh, it's a request for a friendly amendment uh, to include uh, 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 notification of the of the uh, changes to the lapsed licensure, and I'll craft beautiful language, perfect language for that, and I'll make sure that Julianne approves it before it goes out. David, what about, so that takes care of the fees part, right? But it doesn't address, unless I'm missing something, it doesn't address what you do if you haven't done your CEUs or what CEUs do you have to give us for the years you missed? So if your lapse, license was lapsed for 10 years, do you have to show us that you did CEUs for those 10 years or where's the cutoff on that? I thought the CEs do address, do. Um, Does for, it? And, and it makes you go back like three years or something like that. I wasn't sure. That's why I'm asking. Be right back. Um, I'm gonna. I'm about to go check, but I believe it is three years. But let's see. Thirty-six C C H. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So well, assuming it's been more than three years that they left. So yeah, it's the lesser of the accumulated C U requirements or thirty-six C E H. Okay, so friendly amendment, uh, you know, can I, do I have permission to write something beautiful, assuming approval by the department? Yes. Okay. So should we, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, call the, call the, whatever. Um, you need a motion? They, yeah. Oh, I thought we had a motion already that we didn't vote on, right? For the, for the. I think so. For the notification. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Bob, you got all that? We lost Bob. Bob's away for a minute. But just while Bob's away, um, just like, you know, I did just check into the legislative proposal that we had uh, for 2020, and it, the, the credential issue about automatically having architects do the interior design work is already, that is in our package. Thanks. Um, Sorry, guys. So that's already in there. The only thing that we have to figure out, I know that was raised at the board meeting. I don't know, my brain's on Corona time. I don't know, at some point in the last probably nine months with you guys was the issue of how this shows up online because I know someone brought up the concern of saying, well, you know, when you pull up all of the credentials for, uh, for interior designers, the architects have always shown up. And now if they don't have that credential at all, how do they still show it? How does it still demonstrate that they are authorized to be able to do this work? Um, and so, yeah, we have to still, we have to work out how that, how the information's conveyed that you guys again, can still do that. But um, that's more of a technical issue on our end after, after the bill is passed, but before it's implemented to make sure things are showing correctly to the public. So the, the credentials, the IDE credential, obviously is still going to exist. Now it's just a matter of the mechanics of getting that credential automatically issued to any currently active Connecticut architect. Without uh, automatically done or at request or? No, I think it would be automatic, right? Because you become an architect, you become an interior designer. Yeah, that's, I thought that's what the whole discussion was. I thought that was the okay. change. All right, I want to just be, okay. I have to, I keep on, putting Zoom on my full screen and then trying to minimize it out. And so it makes it really difficult to go back and forth towards the legislation. But I can I can get the exact language for you guys and send it out. All right. So Bob, while you were gone, um, yep, there was a friendly amendment to, uh, and, then, and then we voted on it to, that I will be adjusting the language to reflect the, uh, the, the, um, uh, Lapsed license. Lapsed licenses. Yeah. Is does the motion is the motion still fill in the fill number one agenda uh, fill moved and then agenda uh, Al, um, sorry Phil and Angela correct that was the original. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. And it's amended to include the okay very well. 
you know, I'll have to craft that and work with the department to make sure it's approved and before we issue, before the department issues the notification to all licensed architects and I communicate with AIA as well. Okay. Okay. So I think, um, <coughs> well, we keep 4B on there because there are these open issues regarding other, well, it's not about continuing education and emeritus status at this point. Um, we should either amend that 4B to just say uh, uh, interior um, design changes or something like that. Or we can make a new business. <laughs> Um, sure. Whoever you want to do it. Well, we already discussed it. It's just a matter of keeping it on the agenda. Keep it on the agenda. Okay. Four, four B carry over for four B, but right. just just so eliminate yeah. continuing okay. education and emeritus status and change that to just well, continuing interior design. Interior design. Yep. Yeah. And um, I think are we? I think we're set with four C, right? I mean, we've got that sort of solved. I believe so, yes. Okay. Yes. So new business, um, 5A, changing regional meetings to every other fall in conjunction with the ALA form instead of every fall. Phil, you wanna talk to this? I think you have strongest opinions about this. Yeah, sure, I'm happy to. Um, basically the discussion that's been taking place at the regional meeting is to eliminate, to try to save money, basically eliminate every other fall meeting. So we would meet every other year in the fall instead of every year in the fall. Um, I know I've had mixed thoughts about it. I enjoy the, the meeting part. I enjoy getting together. I, I think really when I really started to hardly to think about it hard, it's probably not a bad idea to get rid of the second fall meeting. We would just meet every other year, but maybe the years in between, if we have anything to talk about, we could just do a call like we're doing today. So I don't know what everybody else's opinion is. But we need we need to come to a consensus because um, at our next fall meeting, which is scheduled for October, either virtual or in person, we'll need to vote regionally on it. So what is everybody? Good. Uh, do you want? Why don't you make a motion and then uh, we can talk about it. In, uh... I'll make a motion that um, that we vote in favor of eliminating every other fall regional meeting and we just meet on the on the interim years. We Second. need. A years as AL forum that we're going to have. Second. Okay. Discussion. Lauren. Mute. Uh, I, um, I think that we should just do the meeting every other year. I was, that was my position the last time I agree with it. Um, so I don't really have anything more to add to that. Yeah. <clears throat> Angela, anything? I agree. Yeah. Um, I think we should uh, join Region 2. Um, but be beyond, be besides that, uh, I also agree. Can I ask, what is ALA? Architectural Licensing Association. Alabama. What is All right. It's the, it's the educators conference. I think that's what that refer, refers okay. to. ALA. All right. It's the landscape architects. We're going to like join with them. Right. American. You, uh, Bob, you could actually change that if you want the educators forum, because that's really what it is. Yeah. Educators forum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think, um, I think there's no, no more discussion. So let's, uh, uh, let's, let's have our vote uh, all in favor of the motion to go to every other year aye. in conjunction with the Educators Forum. Okay, aye. 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 All right, it's, I think that's unanimous. Uh, and Bob shared the application of Mr. Brian Moore to sit for the ARE directly in Connecticut. Yeah. Um, I haven't, so somebody's going to have to stand down. Whose turn is it? Does anybody know? Who's, who, did the, who did the last one? Either Phil or I, we've been kind of doing them oh, back so, and forth. So you're, what, so you're saying it's my turn? I admit it, but it's probably 
my turn because I wasn't saying that. You're the chair. You're probably too busy. It is, so. <laughs> it's my turn. Okay, I'll stand down, Bob. I'll oh, stand goodness. down and review Mr. Moore's application. I just I didn't see the actual application. I just saw the. Well, um, I meant his background information. Yeah, the the, right. Yeah. David, may I, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I just interject here for a minute? Absolutely. His transcript, uh, the, he ha does not have a four-year degree, unless I didn't read it correctly. He's got an associate's, in, uh, gen an associate's degree, just, you know. I will certainly right. review all of that as I, yeah. as I go through it. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I have I, to look at that in relation yeah. to, I, I, I don't know if we, if we differentiate between degrees if you're either NAAB right. accredited or you're not. Right. That was my next, that was my next question. This is, I think it's the first time in recent memory that we've had someone with less than a four-year degree that I, I, I recall. So that's the only reason I was bringing it up with, because I, I think you're correct. I think, I don't think it differentiates. It's a non-accredited degree. That's what it is. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to prejudice the rest of the board or anything like that at this point. So let me, let me do the review. Uh, and uh, I will um, respond hopefully before the next meeting with my recommendations. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, and we'll carry that as sole business on the next on the next uh, agenda. So uh, use of electronic seals um, uh, with the assistance of, of Gina Calabro at AIA Connecticut, a survey was conducted um, that closed in June. And we asked, there was four or five questions um, asking those uh, members who is who are using uh, electronic signatures, um, digital signatures and slash electronic signatures. And there's a difference. Um, and because I think I can say with some confidence that many jurisdictions who are, especially in these times have been changing to electronic submission of documents are not, are accepting plans that don't meet are the legal requirements for a digital signature. And so with the help of AIA Connecticut, we're going to establish a, a working group to help the industry understand best practices that do comport to our statutes. I think it would be a step. I can't remember statute or regulation in terms of what define. I think it's regulation that defines the seals. Um, and, and talk about the different technologies available. And this is really to both inform our members and to inform the, um, the building inspection community as to what is acceptable. Now, does anybody from the board want to be part of that group? I can do it, David. I, um, I've had some experience with a couple of different municipalities. Um, and I, you know, it's, there's the whole segment of what, what are the uh, licensed professionals doing, but then there's the, the end of the building officials where they're they have different ways of accepting drawings for permits. So um, I, I have limited experience, but I think it, it may help. And hopefully we can get a couple building officials as well, lo local guys to, to chime in on what's working and not working. Well, I mean, I end. can tell you right now that, that Greg Grew has got his hand up to, to be part of this group. So there's one. Oh, then yeah, I decline to be on. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, no, we, we, yeah, well, he's, is he an architect or a building official or both? Both. Dual? Yeah. Both. Uh, does he, but he's not a employee of a municipality that accepts yes, he is. Yeah, Oh, he East is. Har East Hartford. He's East yeah. Hartford. Okay. Um, okay. Who else is, do we have other people yet? Yeah. I mean, 
Uh, G- I have the list with Gina. Uh, uh, it, 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 you know, it was. This is a question for Gina too. There were a lot of people that said they'd like to participate, but a committee can't really function with you know forty-seven members or something like that. Right. So I, uh, and my thinking is is to limit that size and, and just sort of go through it and try to pick from large, medium, small firms and and a building officials if so, and keep the keep the list somewhat manageable. Yeah, so like commitment. Eight. Yeah, David, I mean, I wasn't going to volunteer because I didn't want to make too many people, but if you need somebody from a small firm, I'm happy to do it. My experience has been, we've submitted a bunch electronically. Half of the time, they're asking us to actually submit printed copies with wet seals. In New York, in particular, we have two jobs in New York. They didn't accept electronic anything, and they want live wet seals on everything. Yeah, no, that's it's it's really because now firms are finally beginning to start to use this because oh. now building departments are now saying, well, we want electronic, re- do electronic reviews. And um, Darren put together a guide, Darren Hobbs put together a guidance document on the building official side. Um, but uh, really, I think we need to educate the, the profession because where some firms I think are probably doing this right, many firms don't, don't have a clue. Um, and uh, so that's the whole point is to help educate and get, the th- get things done according to, uh, to the law which I don't think they're being, it's being done. And I'll, I'll admit, even at the state level, uh, state construction, we're not, we haven't been enforcing this. Right, so which, if is you need Darren, to... which is why Darren got involved. So for even for our jobs, you know, that we are, we're, we're actually authority having jurisdiction. Anyhow. So this, this issue that you guys are discussing isn't just because of COVID-19, but going forward after COVID-19. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so our, our, we changed our statutes or regulations or both a number of years ago to allow electronic, you know, um, verifiable digital signatures. Okay. And, you know, think about DocuSign or something like that as, right. as, as an example of that. Um, and DOT has been doing it for ages for their jobs. And they do it per the engineering regulations, which to a degree are, 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 are somewhat more um, restrictive because I think unfortunately for the engineers, they defined the technology in a time when there weren't as many good options, like DocuSign didn't exist when they did their thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and ours is, it allows, just establishes the parameters, but doesn't say you have to use this or that technology, or it's just a little bit, it's a little bit broader. Um, anyhow, um, I think the forum would be good. The state of Florida did an excellent document on this, uh, which we already have. And I think the whole idea would be to be able to put something out to the industry to say like, this is, this is best practices. Uh, that came from AIA Florida, by the way, their document. So. I mean, I would hope that eventually we could get a similar document published by Connecticut, possibly with extensive plagiarism of the Florida document. Um, in any case, uh, not that I'm suggesting that we plagiarize anything. Well, and I guess my hope is, too is that um, with the consensus of the building officials and maybe even uh, input from the state building official office, um, you know, can we, not that each municipality is going to use the same electronic submission system, but, um, you know, why, why would architects go through the exercise of educating themselves and setting themselves up for all of this if half of the municipalities in the state are still going to require wet stamps, you know? Well, right now our, our statutes allow either. So, um, so are you saying that when a municipality tells me that, that I have to bring wet stamps you know, drawings over that I can say no. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying so, when, yes. they, when they when they when they say you have to provide electronic ones, we're going to come up with saying this. It's not just sticking your seal on there uh, as a JPEG file with a signature on it. That that doesn't cut it. Right. Yeah. No, I understand that. I'm just saying why? Why if the municipalities aren't on board with switching to electronic submission? Well, some are, some aren't. We just want to make sure that the architects understand that, and the municipalities also understand that if they say you are going electronic, that it, that it, what it means. Right. But I, it's not, 
I don't think as the licensing board, we license architects. We don't regulate building officials. We can't yes. tell them yeah. what. No, my, I'm sorry, I'm just not being clear. My point is if, I'm just trying to get a consensus from the municipalities, if a majority of them or even half of them are still gonna require wet stamps and signatures, why as a group, our architects would, why would we bother with this? The, yeah, change, the changeover, you know what I mean? I say what Angela is saying because the reality is that it's only going to, it's only a handful of them in the state that are going to really say, okay, we're just going to do electronic three quarters of them, especially you get to these small towns where, I mean, the third of the towns in Connecticut probably only have building officials that are only there three days a week. And they're not going through this whole electronic submissions or anything. So I think it will become, that part would become a little bit of a challenge. On the other hand, I also agree with David that we should have something in place for the places we can do it for. Right, and I think this committee is important, or this group, whatever, to to really try to accelerate this and be, make it more mainstream. I mean, even pre-COVID, you know, this was on my radar as like, why aren't we, you know, doing this faster or, or turn, turning this into a regular process just to, to reduce the amount of paper. But you're right, Phil, I mean, I've got, I'm dealing with a building official now that won't even look at anything electronic, I have to, even just for an update of a sketch, I have to deliver him a piece of paper. <laughs> so we're not going to we're not going to change that. But I just want to make sure that when you know, because like the state, yeah. so our the state building officials as they look over the jobs that they that they're actually the authority having jurisdiction are are going are now digital. But we're not getting documents that meet the statutory requirements for either architects or engineers. So we have to get them to start doing this. Agree, properly. absolutely. And if that, as that floats down, and I think it will float down more and more, especially to the, the cities that are already, you know, a little bit more progressive in terms of use of electronic documents. And eventually it'll, it'll get to the, uh, the smaller municipalities. There'll always be outliers there until such time that whatever That, there, that it becomes 100% digital. I, I don't know when that'll happen. Right. It'll take time, but... It's, it's, it's accelerating now because of this disease. And I, and I think as people get comfortable with the types of technologies that you can effectively review electronic documents. Um, and what I, interestingly, I discovered that, that um, uh, you can sign a document like in, using software like Bluebeam and comment on it or, or uh, Acrobat. And since you're not physically changing the underlying documents because of, you know, the way that those documents have like layers um, and your comments sort of sit on top of the original drawing, that that doesn't remove the digital signature, which is exactly the kind of thing that we want to be able to get out there at people. It doesn't change the document. Develop best practices. So anyhow, um, I'm going to definitely be part of that, of that committee. Uh, and anybody else from the ALB is, is is invited to participate in that. Yeah, I'd be happy to, but if you have too many people, I'm happy to step away from it too. So whatever you decide is fine with me. I'll work with Gina in developing a, a list. Gina, are you on board with that? Yes, also I wanted to add that um, I'm a member of the uh, CBOA uh, I've kept the membership up since I started and we could actually see about if they would do a survey for us on how many municipalities um, are accepting electronic seals, how many are considering it and how many would not consider it. Maybe we could then get an idea of which ones per um, Angela's comments. So that was the first thing I was going to mention. And the other thing is, is that we did a, a survey before we did the electronic seal one, asking where everyone was licensed. Um, I did it for different purpose, but it may be, that may help and um, we could find out as far as when you're putting this committee together, the states that are, are doing electronic seals that, uh, and, and if people are licensed in those states, then they may have some information and may be a good source to be on these committees as well. And I could forward you that information as well. Okay, but I, I think so. You and I should probably plan on talking within the next few weeks to develop this uh, this committee, though, 
Um, okay. I think, you know, looking at the spreadsheet, the, the, you can probably, you can see, I think, I think we did ask what states for, I don't know, whatever. I, I think, I think, I don't want to overcomplicate this because I, th I think we already have the, 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 a broad enough group there since we did ask for firm size that we can put together the committee. All right. So, um, 5D, I think we already tackled 5D because we beat that to death in 4B or C or something. That was the letter. And uh, so now we're at 5E. The following candidates have passed the ARE and are recommended by the, by the department for licensing. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman? Have, sorry? I'm sorry, may I, may I interrupt for one minute? Yes, I'd like to ask, I'd like to request the board if it, the board's consideration for one more candidate under 5E. Okay, and who would that um, be? Mackenzie Lucart, L-E-U-K-A-R-T, Mackenzie Lucart. So we'll she have- also, She has also passed, uh, qualifying by uh, passing the ARE. We have her council record. Credentials are in order. So we have three candidates, William C. Cap, Cap, Cap something. Uh, uh, Samuels, Zeif, and again, the name? Mackenzie Lucart. Okay. Um, um, move to approve those three candidates. Second? Second. It's wrong. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I think that's unanimous. Uh, 5E is for informational purposes, 5, uh, 5F is for informational purposes. Uh, is this the complete list or are there others that, that need to be added to this list? It's the complete list. Okay, uh, no action required. Uh, 5G, the following have been approved. I have, I've got, I have a question. How, how is it that Robert A.M. Stern Architects was not previously approved. They, I think, they existed under a different, a different um, uh, entity. I, I, I said the same thing as soon as I saw that. Yeah, me yeah. too. Or maybe it's an ownership change or something. Well, it wouldn't be an ownership change. It would be a structural change, possibly. Structural, yeah. I don't know. I didn't see a previous credential for them. I, I the first thing I did, David, and I should look to see. Oh, yeah, so you didn't see anything never, for them? Maybe they never knew they had to have one. Well, I think, <laughs> they, I think the action should be taken, shouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hmm. Uh, and then Thompson and Morris. So you didn't see any issues with either of these, Bob. So I guess they've already been approved. Correct. I, I honestly do have a question about, you know, their prior practice as a corporation in the state of Connecticut and how they were doing that if they hadn't registered. You're talking oh. about Robert Stern. Stern? Yeah. I mean, they did work in Hartford, extensive work in Hartford, extensive work in I think they've done work at UConn. Work at UConn too, yeah. I mean, I, said, I mean, I said, David, it's, it's not common. I, I don't think I've ever had a client ask you know, to, to verify your corporate practice structures. I, I just, I don't, th people just assume all you need is the individual license. I don't think it's very, uh, I mean, I'll, from, very I'll, well known. I think we all know from watching Perry Mason that, you know, ignorance or whatever is no excuse. So with, I, what I will say is with regard to UConn, the uh, attorney who reviews all the architect contracts to the extent that they come to her, she constantly checks to make sure that they're properly licensed. Same, and, same, same at the state of Connecticut. I mean, Roberta Avery yeah. is brutal about that sort of stuff. So. so, I mean, I don't know if Stern has actually done work at UConn. I know there have been proposals by him, but, uh, you know, there's too much for me to think about to, to know for sure if Stern has actually done something there. <laughs> What it's worth, I just typed it into the look to the license lookup page on DCP, and Robert A. M. Stern Architects didn't come up. So, 
somebody could do Bob could do the research and find out if they yeah Bob I'd ask you to ask them even though they're approved now is to is to ask in the past is is were they previously under some other entity name Ramsa or something already a practicing um, corporation in the state I will and I I just you know it it, it strikes me as right. you know, I respect Angela what you said but I I don't know what the implication is but. Um, well, what I'm implying it, is that it, it's, it's, a it's, not, of, it, it's a Secretary of State issue as well. I mean, you shouldn't be practicing. Right. But I think, as I had mentioned in a previous meeting, when, um, when Tom from Rhode Island, um, you know, he picked up some work in Connecticut and he called me and he said, what's going on with corporate practice? Do you have to have it or not? How do you get it? He did try calling the Secretary of State. He couldn't get through to anybody. You know, it just, we had a discussion about that. But um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know that it's really broadcast, you know, big and bold out there that, uh, that, uh, you know, firms need to have this and why and what the importance of it. I mean, I wonder yeah, if maybe, the, you know, a memo see, should go out or something to. Well, I don't know. Lorraine can, can opine on this. I mean, you know, if you, if you're a big firm, you have legal staff or you have, uh, you know, you work with a, le a law firm. And right. especially if you're doing work in other states, you always are asking that question before you jump in, you know, what are the rules of practice in that state? And can I offer, can, you know, offer that there? So, and, a, 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 you know, an international company would have that you would kind think of thing. Would. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this isn't for the mom and pops. Maybe it is with uh, our friend Tom from uh, Rhode Island, but um yeah. Oh, absolutely. The smaller firms or firms as they grow or whatever, they, they definitely, I think, wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily know about this and they should be thinking about it. But yeah, larger firms that, you know, you got your legal I mean, person that reviews uh, every contract. We have a small sure. representative of a small firm that works in multiple states. And I guarantee you, without even asking Phil, that he checks into the legal status when he practices in other states. I mean, it's just good business practice. You're correct, David. Thank you. So anyhow, it's just a question, Bob. I don't know if it's something you can look into, but I will. I'd I will. It. Uh, so our next meeting is scheduled for September 18th, likely to be a Zoom webinar. Um, oh, I, I jumped over con comments or concerns of any person present today. Hi, this is Gina. Um, I did want to mention that we've been receiving some emails from um, those going through licensure. There's been some issues with the Prometric Centers. Um, they have been canceling appointments even though they reopened. And I know, I think Manny's on the call as well, so he could probably add to it. Uh, we, we recently heard that they're looking at potentially doing um, online testing, but it probably won't happen until either late of this year or into 2021. But I just wanted to make the comment so that you're aware of it, um, which is why we may not see uh, as many licensees come up uh, or, uh, you know, so, as so, as so yeah, NCARB is, is highly aware of this. Uh, it was a problem when, when things started opening up again and uh, architects, architecture licensing <clears throat> by Prometrics, they decided that it wasn't a whatever critical activity. And so because there was limited seating at the Prometrics sites, they unilaterally would bump um, architectural reservations. Um, now, since that time, NCARB has convinced Prometrics that, that architecture is in fact a critical category and apparently that no longer happens so that was something that 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 certainly that no, it's that still happening, David. we just okay. had somebody who was just bumped uh, a few weeks ago so I, it's i would suggest and, that well that that's that's really something that then would have to be followed up with ncar but by the candidate because they apparently have worked that out with prometrics Yeah. Well, uh, we're still, we're looking into it. I know Manny's been, I got him involved. We, you know, I sent him over the stuff. He's been involved. We've been talking to them, but the answer really has been, we will, we will, from NCARB, we'll, we'll make, uh, 
the best uh, accommodation that we can. But there, the problem is, is especially, um, I would just say the concern from our end where I feel bad for these individuals is some of them, it's their last exam and they've gotten, they, they weren't able to take the exams and now they've gotten bumped. And now one is bumped until September and he was supposed to originally take it back in April. So, I mean, I just, I, I, my point was, I don't know how many actual uh, submissions or, you know, people submitting for license or is going to come through if that's been the case where people aren't able to finish their exams. Okay. I mean, are you asking the board to take action of some kind? No, just a comment. Just okay. so that it was, I, I wasn't sure, I wanted you to be aware of what we've been told as far as, and I'm and not sure, I'm sure you may have been told as well that they're looking at other options now due to this situation. Yeah. I mean, like anything like this, there's all kinds of concerns with when they start changing the testing protocol. So I'm sure, but I know that that's a major focus of NCARB, so. Any other comments, concerns, anybody? Manny, if you're there, you have your, probably don't have rights to talk, but make a comment or I could. Um, so our next meeting is September 18th. We don't yet know what the format of that will be. Um, Bob, I would just request that if if there's when the when the zoom invitation goes out if that could be for the for for the members of the board if that could be embedded in a in a in an actual physical outlook invitation that gets then sent to us in addition that we could have that link right in an outlook invitation i just i just i apologize for you know having to scramble to get on this meeting i just don't know what happened to that zoom invitation whenever it came Okay, I have to. I have to. Um, I'll, I'll find. I'll, I'll find out how I. <clears throat> the the link that appears uh, when we set up the Zoom webinar, I could resend. You know, the invitation that appears in the Zoom webinar uh, page is the invitation that goes on the agenda, and goes to. Um, yeah, but know, not that the one. Public, the, right. the one. I have for... to find. I have to find out the link that the board members get. Yeah, yeah. Separate email. How how I do that? But I'll I'll work it out. That one. Wait, there's a chat here. Manny, all set. Thank you. Okay, good. Thanks, Manny. Um, you can reach out to me offline on that too, Bob, and I'll work with you. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so uh, move to adjourn. So moved. Okay, everybody. We'll see you. Uh in September. All right. Take care. About that. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.